Hey everybody, there's a little glitch on uh, the camera that comes with my my uh, Chromebook, I, my 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 high value elite Acer Chromebook, which is my ca connection to the world other than my phone, and which goes to show what happens when you start a YouTube channel without thinking about the equipment at all and just use the equipment that's around which is usually fine but if you turn off the camera uh, if you end your video but turn off the camera and close the camera window before the little icon shows up that the video has I don't know done what God knows then the video just disappears and that's what happened to me today. I, I turned off, the, I closed this window, and the video I just recorded, which was 15 minutes long, disappeared, and I'm not going to redo it. Basically, it's all just encapsulated here. Basically, this is just a, a video to say I'm not making videos this week. It's my truly bookless video because I think I only read one book this week. Um, so I'm up to 61, something like that, 61 or 62 on my 100 book challenge, which is good because that challenge is going to have to change. Here's what happened. I did something really stupid, which no one, which I recommend no one ever does, and that is open Facebook. And I looked at my Facebook account, and of course what popped up, you know, all my friends, uh, um, you know, wonderful updates. No, of course not. You, you don't see your friends' updates on Facebook. What are you, an idiot? Why would you see that? You see ads. You see at rows and rows of ads, and you see goofy uh, AI uh, constructed stuff that's trying to rile you up. Uh, but what I did see was a Prime Day offer for three months free on Kindle. Oh, there it is. It's still up there. Wow, great. So I clicked on that because I never get these deals, and it's some, some sort of perverse... Uh, joy I have of clicking clicking on these ads uh, so that uh, I can be taken to my Kindle account and be told I'm not eligible for it and then I can uh, I can complain and bitch about the whole thing and this time I went to it and it said sign up and so I, I hit touched one button where it says get offer and it took me right to my my Kindle account it said congratulations you were signed up for three months so I'm I'm back on Kindle Unlimited for three months, uh, free, and then you know I I know how to cancel ahead of time, so I can cancel it after the three months. But I'm thinking about keeping it. I know I did a video a while back where I expressed um, some concerns about Amazon controlling so much of the book market. What people took that was from me was just a, a total of I hate Amazon. I, I don't want uh, anything to do with Amazon, whereas I was just raising questions of concerns I have about them, although there's a lot of good stuff on Amazon that's only on Amazon because people are trying to make money off their independent books and you know the, w the way the, the culture is set up right now with publishing being broken, so broken, uh, mainstream publishing being so messed up and so broken and so difficult to get books out there for people, for most people. There was a big dust up on Twitter about that this week where some editor, some, I'm sorry, some agent tweeted, you know, there's these certain book agents who are on Twitter all day lecturing people on how to, how to write their pitches so they can be rejected properly through the proper channels by the agents. And this agent had wrote something like, I... I got a pitch today that I rejected that was basically um, deliverance meets uh, the road, but YA. This is, sounds ridiculous, but, but anyway, and she goes, and you know, I had to reject that pitch, but I would love it if somebody would write it for me, and. And then somebody wrote back and said, well, but not the person who who queried you, who's, but not the writer who sent you the pitch. And then she wrote back. She said, well, it wasn't strong enough. They didn't really uh, frame it that way with these comparisons, but uh, it wasn't a strong pitch, so I'd like someone else to write. And 
I, I think it's evident enough from, from that. You can see the problem with this. You know, people are sending out their ideas and, and this agent decides, uh, that's a pretty good idea. Um, why don't I just take it and I'll try and get some better writer to write it. And that's unethical. Well, she didn't know it was unethical. She didn't think it was unethical. Her, her, the company she worked for did and they fired her. Uh, and now maybe she can go back to what she used to do before, which was apparently working for, for a Swiss uh, finance company. So maybe that's a better fit, uh, you know, working in high finance. Uh, she sounds pretty doggy dog. Anyway, I don't know. So that's what I mean when I say like mainstream publishing is broken. And Kindle, and as others have said, all really Amazon is doing is is being a good ruthless uh, capitalist. And there's a lot of stuff on in Kindle Unlimited that I've been interested in reading, uh, that kind of fits that's new that I want to explore that fits the, like the kind of uh, you know old-fashioned thing that I really enjoy reading for fun like for example there's a genre called space opera which I'm sure you know is one of the main um, science fiction genres goes all the way back to even back before A.E. Van Vogt and and uh, E. E. Doc Smith, this, the Voyage of the Space Vehicle, and the Lensman, and all that stuff goes way back, you know, up through today with Ian M. Banks and Alistair Reynolds, and all, you know, a lot of uh, uh, great British space opera writers of the '90s and so on, and then uh, the the, the uh, almost had it, almost had it, the something series that was an Amazon series for a while. The I don't I don't remember. Anyway. There's a lot of those, but then I found there's this whole other sort of other term of space opera, which is basically these like pulp stories that these writers bang out like month after month in these series, you know, about, you know, that are kind of like Battlestar uh, Galactica or like uh, Star Trek in a certain way, but more um, war focused, more military focused. And you know they're usually two ninety nine, and and they're all in Kindle Unlimited, and people just eat them up. And there's a couple Western genres, like there's a few Western genres like that too. Like these are mostly genres that it seems people go to when they can't get a certain type of reader, a certain type of racist reader. Like say, the analogy would be the the romance reader who will just read tons and tons of romance, but there's uh, male readers like that too who like to read a ton of westerns you know and they maybe they miss them from you know there's no 7-eleven racks full of little skinny 150 page Louis L'Amours anymore but there's people writing them on Kindle and they're writing them fast you know there's this one series it's 137 books and this is not the edge or anything like that these are new books of this person who's like the ex-mayor of a small town somewhere has been writing for you know, since 2011, so that's like what, like uh, uh, 12 books a year. So they're kind of comparable to, you know, and these these books have thousands of, of four and five star reviews, thousands, like not the kind of stuff you can game. Um, uh, you know, and they're, and they're selling, Amazon does this new thing now where they'll show you when you look at a book, it'll show how many people read or bought the book on Kindle. This, this last month, so you can see hundreds of people are, are buying these books every month, each, each one. Um, so they're like The Spider or Doc Savage or something like that, you know? Those are written by single people for the most part who wrote one a month, 50, 60, uh, thousand, thousand word stories every month and day, year after year. And so there's this whole kind of new, new pulp, this is probably not news to anybody but me, but there's this kind of new pulp ethic and spirit and you know I'm, I'm glad it hasn't gone away so I kind of want to explore it so I'll keep it for I'll keep Kindle Unlimited at least for the three months probably longer because there are a lot of things in there in that program that I want to read you know it's $12 a month and I'm super cheap so like even like Netflix and I know people who have Netflix subscriptions and they never read any and they never watch anything but like if I don't use a subscription 
like like when I had that Paramount Network subscription for a while when I was just like binging Star Trek all the time like that's all I'm watching is Star Trek because I paid for this damn service it's $10 a month I'm not going to watch anything for free when there's still stuff on the service I paid for and I used to feel the same about Netflix and everything which is why I always end up canceling everything but if I'm going to read you know if I read at least one Kindle Unlimited book a, a week and they're normally $3 the cheapest ones that's that's 12 that pays for itself but if I'm not reading, if I'm only reading one or two uh, books a month, I'll, I'll cancel it. But I want to keep it. So now here's my problem, because that would be paying for books, right? So I have three months basically to finish my 100 book challenge, or I will have to cancel Kindle Unlimited before they charge me. So it's three books in, in three, 39 books in three months, which is a lot, but I've been going pretty fast on these and, and garb. Garbagus is going to help because I've got tons of these 40, 50,000 word old paperback originals in a couple of different series. Uh, you know, of course, every, every single uh, uh, challenge I've done so far, every event, I've fallen short of everything I had on it. I've only read about half the westerns I plan to, and I'm probably not going to finish. And I've only read uh, a couple of Star Trek books. I'm in the middle of the second one, and it's pretty good but I'll talk about that next time. <clears throat> um, so where was I at with that? Uh, so I can do it. Now my other dilemma is, uh, of course, I want to use this Kindle subscription while I've got it free, but I cannot, it would not be fair really to count the books I borrow for free on the Kindle as part of my 100 book challenge because I set that up as 100 books that are either on my Kindle already or on my library hold queue and there was a couple things I cheated on that I did buy because they were on a subject I was researching and I counted those but so I so if I read any of these uh, books I just talked about like any of these space operas and or westerns there's, there's another cool kind of subgenre it looks like kind of like books for for people who liked uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, here's the thing, and there's another one that's, that's naval adventures, Napoleonic adventures. You know, you think of uh, books like uh, Aubrey and Matran, I think they're called, or, you know, uh, uh, Horatio Hornblower, those kind of things. You know, there's a couple other series. There's probably Alexander Kent, there's about three, four series. You can kind of sort of lump in the, the Richard Sharp uh, novels, even though those are not naval novels they're about the military they're about a soldier at, in the same period the napoleonic period and people guys uh and you know women too of course uh, eat those up but there's never enough you know and if so if you're on a small niche like that like like there's people that are happily would read just series after series of napoleonic naval uh series if they were good ones you know once they go through hornblower there's only like 10 or 11 of those uh, you know, so that doesn't last very long. Aubrey and Maturin, I think I'm saying that wrong. There's, I think there's like 22. The author, author died. I, I was under Kent, but then what do you do, you know? Um, but there's people writing those long, and they're doing it in long series is for two ninety nine a piece. Uh, under naval Napoleonic war genre, uh, westerns, there's, there's subcategories of westerns on... Kindle that are genres created just for Kindle based on what people search for. There's one called classic westerns, and those are exactly what it says. Those are the traditional kind of westerns that people have been enjoying this month. Louis L'Amour and that kind of thing, Max Brand, <clears throat> uh, William Johnstone, those kind of things. But there's other people doing them, doing new ones, doing massively long series of new ones that are getting, like I said, thousands of reviews. There's even a category called Louis L'Amour Westerns. You, you, can look, you can look in some of these books and you'll see this is number 10 on the Louis L'Amour Westerns uh, bestseller list. You go to that, that page and it's the Louis L'Amour Westerns and there's, no Louis, and there's no books written by Louis L'Amour on it. They're books written in the Louis L'Amour style. And one way to look at these is saying, oh, Amazon's being you know, so cynical creating all these like little tiny subcategories so they can say everything's a bestseller in one way or another, but that's not actually what happens. It's the algorithm is creating genres based on what people search for. 
So space opera on Amazon, especially on Amazon Kindle, especially on Amazon Kindle Unlimited results, is this almost whole other genre of books that hit these certain tropes that people want to read that are kind of like Battlestar Galactica meets uh, Starfleet, uh, but a little more military focused than Starfleet, you know, and there's tremendous market for people like that, for stuff like that, because there's really no, there's not enough series to keep those things going. And the series are trying to appeal to, you know, the television series are trying to appeal to a, a very wide demographic and trying to, trying to rope in people who aren't really interested in that kind of stuff. To, uh, who knows? Anyway, so I'm, uh, that's a lot of stuff I want to explore, but I can't really count it on my challenge, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Hopefully, I'll just do a massive amount of reading. Like I say, 13 books per month is probably about what I've been doing. No, I guess I've been doing like 20 books a month. Bear in mind, I really focus on shorter books, and Garbagus is going to help with that. I have like a 12-book series of some sort of pseudo-executioner-type series from the 60s that I've that I've had on there for a while. That's 12 books right there, if, if I can stand them. Maybe they're just awful and I won't be able to read them, but who knows. But they're often 40,000, 50,000 words, so those are easy to knock off one or two a day. So I might make it, and that's that's how I've updated my challenges. I, I will be able to read free books on Kindle Unlimited until I have to pay for it, and hopefully by then I will have reached 100 books on my 100 book challenge, and I won't have to worry about it anymore. Okay, so I probably will not be uh, posting again and recording again until early July so I'll, I'll see you there say goodbye to the whatever color that is wall say goodbye to the the, the the sheep painting say goodbye faceless sorry I know you love the clock the broken clock um, but I'm sure there'll be something broken and off and off center and off kilter in the next apartment to drive you crazy and uh, we'll meet again take care